Hello everyone and welcome to the next video in my Gallic Wars series and uh, in this video what I wanted to do was show you the process by which I am painting up the Gallic Warriors. Now before we get started I want to stress that these are not going to win any competitions. I am really am just doing these as quickly as I possibly can while getting them to a tabletop standard that I'm happy with. So well you know don't don't come in here expecting loads of detail and lots of nice layering it's basically just the bare bones so i end up with something that looks like this so this is one of the gallic wars bases for the ghouls that i have already completed now if you've watched the previous updates you'll know that warlord games were kind enough to send me over the starter set for hail caesar the gallic wars and uh, i've also got some romans as well and part of the challenge i set myself for this project was to basically paint them as quick as I can to a standard I'm happy with. So in order to do that what I do is I'm after I've um, done them like this I mount them on a lollipop stick and I paint them three at a time. So I just mount them with a little dot of super glue. Shields I keep separate and I just do on a, a separate lollipop stick but what I'm going to do for this tutorial is just show you how I go about painting these three. So to begin with, you can see that I have undercoated them with the Citadel uh, spray called Wraith Bone, and that's because I use a lot of contrast paints on these, and I like the warm undercoat. So to kick things off, I start with the flesh, and I use the contrast paint Gilliman Flesh, and I just whack this all over the flesh areas. I don't worry about being too neat. I apply it very liberally, getting or make sure I get the faces, hands, and just all of the areas that are visible. And I basically do this because it's the easiest way and what I do next is I use a small dry brush and I use a mid flesh tone like Kislev flesh and I just dry brush all over it and that's it that's all I do to the flesh maybe if I want to bring a little bit of attention to a character I, I might do some highlights but really this is more than enough for the rest of the regiment now you're left with something that looks a little like this now basically I find the easiest way to do this is to pick just sort of earthy tones reds browns greens and work from one model to the next. So I'll do the trousers in one, one color, but then I'll use the same color to do the top on another one. So as you can see here, I'm using the AK Interactive Paint uh, Red Brown. This is a really nice shade. And I'm gonna do the trousers on this guy. And basically I've decided I want to do some stripy trousers on this one. And this gives a really, really nice base coat. But then I'm gonna use the same paint and do the, uh, the upper portion of this model. And it's just a way of saving time. I'm normally painting these, I usually have about six of these lollipop sticks on the go at once. I'm doing about 20 at a time. So I'd go along now and I would do another set of trousers in the same colour. Now, just to vary things, I'm going to use Ultramarines Blue and uh, paint this guy's trousers just to add a, a little bit of flair to these three. Um, so you can sort of see how I go about dealing with all of these. With all the contrast paints, I do apply them quite liberally, but I do use the brush to take off any areas that it pulls too much. Using another AK Interactive paint called Brownish Green, I'm just going to do the uh, trousers on, on this chap. Basically, working three models at a time lets me give a, a good spread of detail um, across what I'm doing. Using Blood Angels Red, I can pick out the sleeves on this one, and I, I try as hard as I can not to duplicate any colours. I know the trousers on this one are the same as the top on the other, but as I say, this chap here in the armour will be getting some stripes. Using the Citadel colour Wildwood, I just basically go over all of the shoes. They're going to be covered in uh, sort of mud effect and static grass, so you're not going to see them too much. So I don't complicate things, I just do them all the same colour. But while I've got this paint out, I'm going to do the uh, the tail that's sort of hanging down off of the standard, as it's a, a nice rich colour. And I find that it works quite well for depicting sort of darker fur colours. Now, I'm going to work on all of the leather belts and trim, and I do this before I work on any other armor. So I use a color, basically I use the contrast paint snake bite leather, and I go over all of the belts, the scabbards, any areas that are going to be leather. And again, I don't worry about being too neat, because when I use the chainmail color in a little while, I'll be blocking in around that. Doing the hand wraps on the standard as well, and again, just picking out belts and parts of the scabbards. Using the colour Agros Dunes, I just go over the standard, and to be fair, I just mix in all the colours for the standards and the spears. Sometimes I'll do them dark, sometimes I'll do them light. It just depends what paint I have out at the time. 
Now, I basically go back and using the AK color, white, gray, but any white, gray will do. I just go over the facial hair very slightly because I'll start to color that now and it works better just over a, a solid undercoat. And while I've got the uh, this paint out, I'm going to do the first part of the stripes. So using a slightly smaller brush, I basically just load it and just very, very carefully just draw straight lines with it down on the, this miniature. And I try to make them fairly wide and I don't worry about being too neat to be honest so I go all the way around the trousers doing that and then basically when that's dry and make sure that it is dry I go to my fill color now in this case I'm going to be using Evil Sun Scarlet which is a nice bright rich red and I just fill in in between those white stripes and I try to leave a little bit of the darker undercoat either side and that's it that's all I do for the stripes and that's good enough for me now that the uh, the white on the face has dried, I just go over that with Apothecary White for uh, sort of, you know, white hair. I like to use Gore Grunter Fur for sort of light brown or, you know, slightly reddish hair. You'll always see one of those on uh, on one of these sticks. I just, I think it's a really, really nice colour. And I also like to just throw in some Black Templar and use that as well. So it's just a quick way of knocking things out. You could go over and add highlights, but again, as this is quick and they're going to be, I'm just trying to mimic that that look of a big mass of men I, I don't bother now I use the color MIG steel and I go over all of the weapons and areas of chainmail now this is probably the part where you have to be the neatest because I'm trying really hard not to get it over any of the areas that I've done in the snake bite leather you can now use this to neaten up but really you have to make sure that this is completely dry before moving on to the next step because sometimes metallics can dry a little more slowly than traditional paints Using the color Retributor Gold now, I go over all the areas that are going to be bronze. I, I don't really worry about whether it looks goldy or bronzy because ultimately, again, I'm trying to do this quickly. I do the helmets in this color as well. Sometimes I'll add a sort of uh, iron looking helmet in there, but for this example, I want to show you how I do it. So going over the pommels and hilts of the swords, making sure I get all of the torques in as well. Um, and when that's done, Hopefully the armor should be dry and I just go over it using the army painter color strong tone again I try really hard not to let this pull too much, um, but this will give it just some some nice shading Now once this has dried I use the color Gilliman flesh and I go all over the gold areas and this just dulls it down And I've, I've just found that this Gilliman flesh is the best wash for gold now i will be going over this in a little while just to highlight it up ever so slightly but there'll be absolutely nothing wrong with leaving it like this and to be honest i do think it still looks pretty cool now i've been playing around with the ak interactive deep shades now this is blue moon so essentially i just go along now and over all of these sort of base colors i just apply a wash so this is the blue moon color and it just really helps enhance enhance those colors and it dries incredibly matte now this is one of my favorite ones it's called reddish filth and when it dries it almost leaves pigment in the creases so i whack this all over that lovely uh, red brown that i put down right at the start and once that's done as well i go back and i grab the green color which is called green dark not grim dark green dark and i just go all over that green brown as well and it just adds a nice bit of of visual interest and really from this point it's just a case of neatening up the work that I've already done these can take a little while to dry and obviously I'll be working on these about 20 at a time so the time by the time I circle back around to this one I'll, I'll have this will be nice and dry Using the Dark Star Paint Braid Gold, I just do some very, very quick dry brushing highlights to the tops of the helmets and the top of the standard just to make it stand out a little bit. Now, this is probably one of the more fun bits. I like to add um, sort of war paint woad to some of the models. So I use a very fine brush and using a color like McCrag Blue, I just draw random patterns where I think they look cool. I don't worry about being too exact. So lots of sort of swirls or stripes following sort of, you know, the lines on the body, they seem to work well. Now, again, I have just left it here, but I've now found that if I just take another color like Lothurn Blue, which is a bit brighter, and just take a very, very small brush and just paint in between some of the lines of the darker blue, it really just helps them stand out. Essentially, it's the same way that I do the stripes.
Now that's really it for the models. All that's left to do is once this is completely dry, I take each of the sticks and as I say, they'll normally be a fairly big batch and I take them and I apply matte varnish all over them and then set them to one side so I can start work on the base. Now I use these big red bat bases. I like the wavy edges and uh, I just, I find them just quite fun to work with. And because these guys are in a war band, I basically wanted to go with things a bit deeper. Now these bases come with pre-made magnet holes. So I apply the magnets using <laughs> this old butter knife, which I don't think my wife has realized has gone missing yet. And once those are in place and it's all dry, I just use a house DIY paint. I use this sort of chocolatey brown color and I just whack that all over the base. Now, while that's drying, I think it's time to work on the shields. And after undercoating them with wraith bone or white or, you know, whatever, a light color, I just whack wildwood all over the back. Um, and that's it. I'm not going to do any more than that because you're not going to see it because a lot of it is going to be obscured by the body. Once that's dry, I flipped them over and it's time to add uh, the shield boss color on. So again, I'm just using steel. Um, so if there's trim or shield bosses or anything like that, I just do them in exactly the same color. And once that's dry, I do the same as I did for the chain mail and I apply army painter uh, strong tone all over that and set it aside to dry. Now, once that's dried, I'll come back again with sort of like a, a white grey and I just fill in around, neaten it up because this is going to be the base for the transfer that is going to go on this shield. So I'm going to be using these shield transfers that come in the Warlord set and these are traditional water slide transfers. So what I like to do before um, I get to the stage I want to apply. I actually like to actually pick what I want and I'm going to go for this nice looking red one and I'm also going to go for this white one as well just to add a little bit of contrast between the two warriors. Once I've cut those out I place those to one side and using a micro set and micro sole I'm going to prep the shield. So I paint micro set all over the shield including the boss and I'm really not that careful with transfers. You're going to see people who use sort of multiple brushes and tweezers. I really don't care about that. I like to get things done quickly. So I put them on a piece of kitchen towel like this and using a pipette just drop water over them. I don't bother putting them in a dish or anything like that. I just find this is a lot easier to get them. Now I just use <laughs> my fingers fingers to peel these off and I just lay it straight on the shield get it where I want it move move it around a little bit and then using a brush with some microsole on it I just paint it out that's it I don't do anything with brushes or move anything around it otherwise that's all I do now once those are dry I hit those with some matte varnish as well and then I apply them to the models while they're on the stick here so I add just a dot of super glue to the model who's going to get the shield uh, we're going to give this guy with the blue trousers the red one and we'll give this guy the white one just so it stands out a little bit against the, uh, the stripy trousers that he's got you have a few minutes to move things around if you like and that's basically it the models are done and ready to go on the base now as I was painting these ones I did finish uh, the whole unit so at, between between each of these painting phases I was painting up sticks of other warriors so I've got two more here um, and I like to essentially do a bit of a dry fit on the base just to work out how they're going to fit together and what looks more visually interesting. Once I've got all that figured out I just use dots of super glue to fix them in place you know again you have a little bit of time to move them around. You can fit quite a few of these models on these bases but get these warlord poses are quite wide so I like to have about five I have stretched out to six um, in some places but but to be honest, I think this is more than enough. So now it's time to start working on the base. Now I use the AK Interactive Basing Paste and this is their Dark Earth Paste. So I just whack this all over the base, taking in the little pudding bases as well, which you may have noticed I painted the same color as the base while they were still on the stick. That's just gonna save you time later. Once this is dry, I'll use a color like gray brown from AK and I'll just dry brush this all over it um, just to add a, a few highlights. It doesn't take very long to dry and if you have a heater and you, you put it on top of that, it will be done and ready to go in about half an hour. Now, I love Tajima 1 tufts as you can see. So I grab things like these bushes and I, I basically just start to block out the base before I put on any of the scatter terrain. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab um, a few of these chunky bushes and fill in some of the larger gaps on the base like this one at the, uh, at the back. And then I fill in using sort of large tufts, medium tufts, small tufts and I 
almost work backwards from largest to smallest. I like to add in some sort of gauze bushes and flowers here and there. And then once this is all done, I whack on more PVA glue and I'm going to add some little clumps of static grass. Now I've got this static grass applicator that I picked off of eBay years ago and that's good enough for me. I just do a couple of passes over the top of it. Once that's on there, I add th this little pot of sort of random twigs and bits of, you know, flock that are, that are nearly out and I just whack them on and basically that's it. Now once it's dry you'll end up with something that's looking like this. That's it. That's all I do. Now as I've already said there are loads of details that you could add to these. You could you could go like really really in depth on the things like the, the tattoos and the shields. You could hand paint them but for me this is a process that gets them on the table nice and quickly and I'm more than happy with this level of detail. Now, as I was painting these, I was painting the rest of the unit, and I basically got this entire unit done from start to finished with the basing, with the help of a radiator, done in just under two hours. Now, this is the fourth one of these that I've done, and this is the end result. Here you go. This is a warband of Gallic Warriors. So I did this video because a lot of people were asking how I did it. Like I say, there's nothing particularly groundbreaking. It's just a process that I found the quickest and to get the results that I wanted. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this and I hope you're enjoying the Gallic Wars project. I'll be back soon with an update on the Romans. I'll leave up some pictures at the end like I always do. But in the meantime, I hope you guys are all keeping well. Look after yourselves and I'll see you all again soon in the next video. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.